Wow. What a lull. I mean, we're, we're waiting for the spring game. They're just, I mean, spring practice. I mean, I'm glad it's spring practice. We need spring practice, but come on, y'all. It's like the same old, same old for the past few weeks. The lawsuit, where are we at with the lawsuit? What is going on? And then John Swafford and the Raycom deal. It was so long ago, a lot of us, we, we forgot the details. I'm just going to go ahead and cue this banner here. Clemson Football Live, I'm glad you're here. You know what? When the lawsuit broke a couple of weeks ago, I was on almost every day, and the week before that, I was on almost every day because I think spring practice had kicked off, and we were all happy. It was almost like we were medicated. We are all like, yes, we got football, you know. And then it all just kind of died down. And I hope you subscribe and all that good stuff. It's free. You can, it's a great way to support the channel. Blah, 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 blah. Glad you're here. But I'm just saying here, it's really got boring over the past few weeks. Because if I go on right now and I type in Clemson football spring practice, I am going to get the same response, for the most part, that I've been getting for the past two weeks. So, like, right off the bat, we were everybody was glad that Bryant Wesco wasn't terrible. Glad Sammy Brown's hair didn't fall off. You know, it was good to hear some people are saying whether it's true or not. You remember last year we had the best kicker in the country until the game's kicked off. No offense, Robert Gunn, not, saying, not, not knocking you. I'm just saying, this guy lined up and kicked a field goal from the Esso Club through the field goal post at Death Valley, and then the season started. Okay, so so I'm excited. It's good to have a little hope here and there, but at the end of the day, this is just practice. Clemson doesn't play for another, what, five months? So, I'm sorry, four months and three weeks or something like that. But we are at the place where the spring game is this Saturday, 1 o'clock, Death Valley. I, I think it's on the ACC network they share with the home shopping network or QVC, something like that. Maybe maybe it's on, you know, one of those, like if you have just one of those digital antennas and, and you have like the main CBS station and, and like here in the upstate, it's Channel 4, WIFF. Well, it's 4-1, then 4-2, 4-3. I think the ACC is like 4-17 or something like that. I don't know. The game will be on there if PBS said they can use their studio and to do a little post game. But that's where we're at. Now, I'm going to try to go to the spring. I don't know if I'm going to the spring game. I don't know. This has been a tough couple of weeks for me. But... It would be nice to see them out there. I know that last year, everybody came away dejected over the offense. And that was our offense, basically. But the one good thing I came away with last year was Peter Woods. Peter Woods never let down. T.J. Parker, I take that, I say one, but a few things. And then, of course, Khalil Barnes. It, th those three guys showed up in the spring game, and it was incredible. All right? You know Phil Moff is going to ball. We know this. But we're just at that weird place to where, like, if you, if you type in Clemson football into Google and, you, and you're, like, looking for something, we're at this point, no news is good news because most of the time news that's going to break now is an injury, and we don't want that. Now, I don't know all the injuries. There's some of you guys, it concerns me how much you know about what's going on at spring practice and you work jobs. Now, if you're retired, that's no biggie. But at some of you, I worry about. Will you be employed in the next few months? Uh, anyway, I'm going to get in here and say, uh, say hello. Then I'm going to talk about suing the ACC. Steve Boy, Steve Bo, Indian Land, South Carolina. What is up? My friend, you got the SO Club. I'm representing Peaches. Well, wrong, what's the wrong side of Peaches uh, down in uh, Myrtle Beach? Parker Henderson, my old buddy. Parker, how's it going? You see Parker, you see that little symbol beside his name? 
uh, that does not mean that he's a con uh, convicted th a thief. Uh, <laughs> to imagine Parker stealing anything is kind of hilarious. No offense, Parker. Uh, but he's actually a member of Clemson Football Live, so he supports the channel on a monthly basis. $3. He's even said, man, I don't even notice that coming out. So uh, if you want to support the channel and you like what I do, I, I hope you'll do that. Parker, thanks for showing up. So if you look below this video, you're going to see the description or whatever it's called now. And you're going to see a link. Now, I had someone who had me on their show. They're a big BYU uh, uh, fan, and they have a YouTube channel, and they're doing, they're doing very well. And they're part of this college huddle that I've joined, which is launching sometime this month. And I, I'll, I'll give you more details on that. But he had me on just wanted me to talk about the, the ACC and the, the, the lawsuit with Florida State and Clemson and, and how it differs. Now, I, have, I, I will tell you this. There, you, there's different angles there um, to this lawsuit. And basically, Clemson's like, if we're in the league, you own rights. But if we're out of the league, you don't. Florida State's like, hey, you guys aren't taking care of us. What about these, you know, outrageous exit fees? So he wanted me to talk about that. He wanted me to talk about what Clemson fans want out of this deal. And I said most Clemson fans want to go to the SEC. Me, transparently, I, I used to think that the Big Ten made me want to vomit. I just, I just got so sick and tired of it, you know? But I am telling you, I wouldn't mind going to the Big Ten. I really, I really wouldn't mind going to the Big Ten. Why? Because they are the mini super conference. Yes, the SEC has done what they've done. They've added Texas and Oklahoma, and that is impressive. We know what they've done in football. They've dominated football like you wouldn't believe. We know this. But as far as the super conference goes, The Big Ten has a team from sea to shining sea, Southern California all the way over to New Jersey. And it wouldn't be nice to be part of something kind of new. This would be the first time that the Big Ten had representation in the Southeast. And it would be nice. I know that everybody's talked about TV rights and what schools get gets more viewers than other schools. And folks, I get that. I work in the corporate world. I, under, I, I get this. I don't know everything, but I do get this. It makes sense. But it would be nice to... Uh, to it, would, it would be nice. I, I think it would be cool to be part of the mini super conference. That the Big Ten has manned up and created so i talked about that so go go on that link not now watch this video <laughs> go on that link say hello to trevor he's very nice he's very kind uh, uh and let me tell you that he's one of the most well-prepared people i have ever been on their show i i mean he sent me questions so i could know what he was going to ask me uh i was like shocked like floored Every now and again, other people send me questions. I'm not saying that they won't send me questions. Just say, hey, this is what I want you to talk about. But, like, he was like, boom. I mean, here's all the questions. He never caught me off guard. It was great. Um, so go over there, check out that video, and tell him hello. Subscribe to him and, and let him know that you heard about him from me. So the AC, I mean, here's what I think about this thing, too. It's according to what judge you get. All right? You've heard that before. It's according to what judge you get because there are certain cases that a judge gets into it gets into the case and they throw a wrench into everything and everybody's shocked. The defense, the prosecution, the whatever, no matter what type of lawsuit it is, whether it's criminal, whether whatever, they're sitting there like shocked by the judge. A judge is that powerful, folks. I mean, it's not like he can bend over, take off his pants, and whistle the lollipop guild with his butt and get away with it, but pretty much. And so I, I said yesterday, and I'll tell you this, these lawsuits, as they progress, it, a lot of it is going to deal with appeasing the judge. If you have a judge who, who 
kind of a quirky personality. It could play in your favor. It could play against you. And I think that could be one of the biggest keys to either one of these schools and any other members who would like to follow out of the ACC. That's going to be the key. Philip Brister, hello from North Dakota. I've always wanted to go to North Dakota. I want to go to a Bison football game. That'd be fun. Be fun. Silver Fox, hello from Jefferson, Georgia. Silver Fox, I used to know Brantley Gilbert, who's from Jefferson, Georgia. I used to know him. Country singer, country songwriter. In fact, I played on one of his demos. So when I think of Jefferson, Georgia, I think of I think of Brantley. Glad you're here. So let's talk about John Swafford. Now, before I came on here, I looked up to see if John Swafford's still alive. And he is. Because we do this weird thing to where we say, you don't speak ill of the dead. And I get the thought behind that, folks. But really? It's just like death? Unless you were somebody like Hitler or something, death is like, no, 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 don't, 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 don't mention what they actually did. That's speaking ill of the dead. You're a disrespectful human being if you should say anything that they actually did. I, I just have a really difficult time uh, with, with that angle, that philosophy. Um, maybe there's a time and place when not to say anything about them, maybe at their funeral. Maybe it's okay to say something bad about them in, out in the parking lot. But I made sure that John Swafford, as of right now, on April the 2nd, 2024, he's still kicking. He's still alive. And that's why I'm going to talk about this. Now, I remember this deal kind of going down, and people were upset about it then. And then, as the whole ESPN-ACC marriage went on and progressed, he kind of went away. And then all of these crazy TV deal details started coming out about the Big Ten, the SEC, and really how bad that the ACC's deal is. And so I took a deep dive. Now, I want to go ahead and tell you, I'm not going to sit here and just trash somebody. I'm not going to do that. You know that I don't do that. Even when I criticize people, I do my very best to keep it civil, but I try to stay to the facts. And I always say this, too. I, I tell my boys this. I say, son, or in their, with their both together, sons, tell the truth. And if the truth is bad, you tell the truth. And if people don't like the truth, they should change the truth. I'm not talking about turn it into a lie. If you did something wrong, you should fix it and or apologize for it. So I'm just going to tell the truth. I, I'm, or I'm going to read some articles that lays out some things, remind some of you like I had forgot the deal that went down between John Swalford and Raycom and his son who worked for Raycom. Now, for some of you people who are kind of like me, you're in your, your, your early, early 40s, late 30s, you'll remember watching games on Raycom. You remember watching games on Jefferson Pilot. If you want to go down some type of nostalgic memory hole, go on YouTube and type in Clemson versus Florida State 1993 or Clemson versus South Carolina 1993, and you can see the full game. I actually done that recently. And... It was, I mean, it seriously, it was like I was transported back in time. It was Jefferson Pilot. and went to Raycom. And you kind of wonder, where did Raycom go? Well, I am going to read this uh, courtesy of ESPN. Now, this is from back in January, yeah, late January, when Florida State names X, and this is the name of the top, uh, of the, of the uh, article, FSU names ex-ACC boss John Swafford in amended complaint. Now, I'm going to bounce between these. And in fact, I'm going to take this, uh, I'm going to take this article. I'm going to put it over in the comment chat box. 
So if you want to read it for yourself, you can see this. There's another good one from Tomahawk Nation. It's a Florida State publication. Uh, they did a really good job on this. In fact, I, I think they did a heck of a job. I don't know who's over there. They might hate my guts. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, it's it, they did a heck of a job. By the way, if you had not subscribed, I hope you'll subscribe. It's free. If you like what I'm doing, it's a great way to uh, support the channel. I do appreciate you being here, being here. And if you're new here to the channel or you've been watching for a while, just drop a comment, say hello. It'd be good to hear from you. So I'm going to read this article from Florida, uh, from ESPN on Florida State and their complaint with John Swalford. So, beginning of this, the Florida State Board of Trustees has filed an amended complaint to its lawsuit against the ACC, alleging the conference engaged in self-dealing with the former commissioner, John Swalford, uh, who made media rights deals that cost member schools, quote-unquote, millions of dollars while helping his son. The 59-page amended complaint filed Monday night in Leon County, Florida, and obtained by ESP, ESPN, ESPN, adds on to the allegations of chronic fiduciary mismanagement and bad faith that Florida State made in its first lawsuit filed on December the 22nd. Now, I am going to scroll on down to, to where i uh, save us some more time. As a result, Florida State chose to file its own amended complaint with a more aggressive tone, specifically naming John Swalford and his son Chad and going into much greater detail into how specific media rights deals with Raycom Sports have hurt all member schools. So notice this, it's not just Florida State that it's hurt. It's everybody. In a new section titled the 2010 ESPN Agreement, Raycom Partnership and New Withdrawal Penalties, Florida State contends that Swafford insisted in conversations with potential bidders for ACC media rights in 2010 that Raycom Sports be included in any new deal with the ACC. Raycom had a long partnership with the ACC but was struggling financially and it needed to keep a package of the ACC media rights for survival according to the complaint. Chad, his son, uh, Chad Swafford worked for Raycom at the time and eventually became a vice president and general manager at the company. All right. As a result, ESPN sublicensed a package of Tier 2 and Tier 3 rights content to Raycom Sports for $50 million annually, and the complaint states that pack, this package provided Raycom with more marketing and media rights that had before, including syndication, ACC property rights, and all digital rights. Uh, let me see. I'm going to keep going down here. It also alleges its partnership with Raycom results in approximately $82 million of rights fees for ACC Tier 2 and 3 games going to third parties each year than the ACC and $50 million in rights fees paid by Raycom Sports ESPN for sublicensing a package of ACC games, which in turn Raycom Sports licensed to Fox Sports for a substantial profit not shared with the members. So, there's that. I'm going to go on I'm going to go on over here to Tomahawk Nation. And I'm going to tell you they they did a heck of a job. They did a heck of a job on this. In fact, I'm not going to read all of this. If you want to read it, you can, you can go read it. But This article from Tomahawk Nation, I'd highly encourage you to read it. Once again, I'm not affiliated with them. I always say that because they may not want to be affiliated with me. It does not look good. It, what it, I tell you what it looks like. It looks like someone cut a deal with people they had a relationship with, whether it's a son, in this case it was, but you know that there was more relationships at, at Raycom. And we see this all the time in business. We see this in family. We see this in friendships, etc. You could just keep going down the line. Probably one of the reasons that Dabo Sweeney hired Tyler Grisham as a wide receiver coach and hired some of the other guys that he's hired is because he actually cared for them. He had a relationship with them. He saw something in them. He wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. He probably did that for Thomas Austin. He did that for Brandon Streeter. Now, I'm not going to sit here and look at somebody and say, you shouldn't 
help somebody if you believe that they actually are capable of fulfilling a duty. I'm not going to do that. The only problem with that is, is the bias that we all as natural human beings carry when we begin to engage in certain activity that could be helping one person at the expense of others. Remember, let's a great example of this. Remember when Kelly Bryant was about to be benched for Trevor Lawrence? I know <clears throat> history's, history's 2020, we're many years removed from that. I mean, that's a long time ago. That's five to six years ago. You remember there was people in the Clemson community saying, hold on, you're not loyal to Kelly? Kelly's a great athlete. He's an unbelievable athlete. Could play so many positions on the field. He's not a quarterback. He could have changed positions and, and probably went third or fourth round into the NFL, and I believe he'd be playing today. The vast majority of anyone who will even think about clicking on this video will never have the abilities that he has and the opportunity to play in the NFL, but he wanted to be a quarterback. And Dabo Sweeney had to put the best man on the field, and thank God he did. But there were people who were going, you have to be loyal to Kelly. But here's the problem. They were, they were actually lobbying for Dabo to be disloyal to the other 84 players on the football team. They didn't think about it that way, but it, that was actually it. So in this scenario, maybe John Swafford's looking at Chad and he's going, you're my son, you're a smart man, We've have a rela I have a relationship, uh, relationship with people here at Raycom, and I am going to help out. But my question is, at what cost? At what cost? It was a cost. What's the old saying? Good, uh, the, the road to hell is paid with good intentions? There's a lot of people I don't believe are sitting around going, ooh, how I can I mess up everything? But that still doesn't mean they don't mess up a lot. You and I probably, if we sat down and, you know, sat down at a meal over a cup of coffee and just hung out and just started talking about our lives, we could probably talk about some mistakes that might have hurt someone that we never, ever intended in a million years to actually hurt them. So as we're reading this about John Swafford and as we're reading this about Raycom, it's easy to all of a sudden see just some big, evil person. Folks, I don't know these guys. They could be terrible human beings. Again, I don't know. But the point is, the member schools of the ACC, they haven't been taken care of. All the while, the Big Ten, my Lord, their leadership has been balling. I mean, balling. They're locking down deals with every network they possibly can. And they're making sure they're getting paid. Where's the ACC at on this? I mean, sure, I'm a, I'm a guy who doesn't like for contracts to be signed and then to be broken, but we do have to remember there's two sides to a contract. And is the ACC doing their, doing their due diligence? There was, there's a date set for February the, uh, you know, 2025. With ESPN, that apparently no one knew about, but the ACC did. So at that moment, you can't stop back. You can't help but stop, step back, and go, "Hmm, I wonder what else we don't know." I want to go into the comment section here for a second. He was loyal just way too long, and, and see, folks, that's what happens here. Loyalty, loyalty can can mess up things. Loyalty can put blinders on your eyes, and you'll go out and do stuff not meaning to be terrible. Not meaning to be terrible, but at the same time, Mr. Zan fan, woohoo. She's talking about Kelly Bryant, Steve-O. Steve -O. I, I think Kelly should have switched positions. I, I really do. I liked Kelly's athleticism. Uh, but, hey, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. And I don't mean that bad towards him. I'm saying the guy could be in the NFL right now making a ton of money.
Uh, I just think you should have switched positions. But that's neither here nor there. I see 45 in here. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, I hope you'll subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Drop, uh, drop a comment and say hello. So that's we're closing down here. Folks, the ACC has not represented its schools well. All the while, as I said, the Big Ten is balling. They, they think deals with what? NBC, CBS, Fox. While the SEC, they are in the acorn that is ESPN and ABC. Owned by the same company. The Big Ten has, what they have done, whether you like the Big, Big Ten or not, especially some of you guys who's older than me, my dad, my dad can't stand the Big Ten because growing up, there was only three channels on. And he hated having Big Ten football shoved down his throat. So no matter how good Clemson did, you didn't see them. You saw the Big Ten, you saw Notre Dame, you saw Southern Cal. I get it. But what the Big Ten has done, they have balled 100% for their member schools. The SEC, the SEC has done the same. The ACC, can't say that. Look, hey, what? No, here's where it doesn't matter what your intention was. The result is still a disaster. So that's really where, where I want to end this thing. It's good to know when someone didn't intentionally or consciously say, hey, I'm going to ruin everything. That is nice. But if the end result is chaos and disaster and less than, and I know those are some heavy words for, for this TV deal. Let me just put it this way. Basically, you look second rate. You look second rate. And that's exactly how the ACC looks. They look second rate. And it seems like the conference has no problem with being second rate. All right, folks. I appreciate you being here. Leave your comments in the comments section. Silver Fox said if ESPN, all it, ha all it has to do is in the grant of rights contract, then why doesn't it? Why doesn't it do it? Why watch the top teams in the ACC haggle it out in court? I'm going to give you my opinion here, Silver Fox. Uh, unless the SEC is willing to take Florida State and Clemson, and if they took anybody transparently, they'd want to take Florida State. Um, why let someone out of the contract only for them to go to your competition, which is the Big Ten, who has the deal with CBS, NBC, and Fox. Because the SEC is tight with ESPN. They are, they are business partners, basically. So if ESPN allows Clemson to leave and go to the Big Ten, and now Big, the Big Ten is planting a flag in the Southeast, the only place they don't have a team, and going... Hey, Greg Sankey, commissioner of the SEC. We're here. Greg's calling up ESPN going, hey, I thought we were cool. Why did why did you let Clemson out of the deal so they can go join my competition, the Big Ten? That's why, that's why I'm very... That's why I'm unconfident. I, I, I just... I, just, I don't know. Let me see. ESPN, all it has to do is end the grant of rights contract, and, it would, and this would be over, and the teams would move on. Why hasn't ESPN pulled the trigger and watched the top teams in the ACC in court? I, I, I just think it goes back to they, they don't. It's not in ESPN's best interest to let them out, anyone out, especially the University of North Carolina. Everybody's talking about Clemson and Florida State right now. University of North Carolina is a hot topic for not only the SEC, but for the Big Ten. Because the SEC has a school in South Carolina. They don't have a school in North Carolina. So you've heard about that. You know, It's just... It's just interesting. It's just interesting. But if you let North Carolina out of the deal, you have to let Clemson and Florida State out. So they open up a can of worms there. 
But that's my opinion. Folks, thanks for joining me here today. I hope you'll drop a comment below the video. Say hello. Tell me uh, your thoughts on this. Go check out uh, Trevor Thorpe over at the... Uh, um, uh, God, what is the name of his? <laughs> it should be. Let me see. It's uh, The link in the video is below that. I want to say it's Saturday Warriors. Go check him out. Let him know that you heard about him. For me, if you want to support the channel on a monthly basis, hit the join button. Uh, Parker Henderson said $3 per month. I don't even notice it coming out. So uh, if you want to support that way, that would be great. Folks, either <sighs> whether it's a lawsuit, no lawsuit, Clemson football is playing, it's preseason, it's summer, it's mid-season. It's always good to be a Tiger. Go Tigers.